Hi, I'm Dave East. I've been a boat manufacturer for over 23 years, but for the last four years, I've worked as a boating editor and hosted a TV series for a major publication where we tested over 300 boats trying to help people pick their best boat. What I saw in the market was there was a gap between an offshore boat and a bay boat. Offshore boats are great outside of the inlet, the problem is the bows are too high out of the water to accept a bow mounted trolling motor and when you bring them inland they just draft too much water. Bay boats are great for inland waters. The problem is you get them offshore and now they've got hull designs that really don't take that rough water very well. They have really, really low freeboard and they have a tendency to take water over the transom, especially in a following sea. This is what led me to the design of the Eastward Coastal 2200. Up here at the bow, we've got a 44 degree entry. Works really, really good in rough water. I mean, it's like a sharp knife versus a spoon. A sharp knife just cuts the waves better than a dull spoon would. As we work aft, we've got reverse chines. Throws water to the side, away and down, it keeps you dry. The most notable difference between our boat and a typical bay boat is here at our transom. Notice one with a full transom. We're using an Armstrong bracket. It's got a built-in swim platform. But the biggest difference is we have a lot less tendency to take water over our transom than a typical bay boat. Typical bay boat, you've got a cut out here, the water doesn't have to go very high, now you're standing in water. In our boat, we can get offshore, we can get in a heavy following sea, you're not going to get any water inside of the boat. Underneath the boat, you're going to see that we have a running pad, much like a bass boat does. It runs a full length of the hull. When this boat runs, it actually comes up on that running pad helps to lessen the wetted surface of the boat, less wetted surface, less friction, better performance. Now that I've showed you the hull design, we're going to go ahead and launch it and I'm going to show you some of the other features of the Eastward Coastal 2200. We have a nice large landing platform for our trolling motor. We've got a large bow casting platform and we recessed it. That way it gives you a little bit of a toe kick so when you're fishing you don't have to look down, you know when you're at the edge of the deck. You have two hatches here and they're very large. This one for your anchor, your chain, all your anchor line. There's enough room for fenders in there and, and additional dock lines as well. Then as you move aft, we have even a larger hatch which leads to a huge compartment. Batteries are on either side for your trolling motor. Still leaves a lot of room for PFDs or any other gear that you want to take along. As far as your fish, we do have insulated boxes that are built into the floor which are for big fish like you know kingfish or dolphin but for smaller fish every boat comes standard with a fish bag. That way you're fishing during the day, all your fish go in an insulated fish bag. At the end of the day you pick up the bag, you take it to the cleaning station, now you're not on your hands and knees having to clean out a fish box and get all the blood out of the boat. Our center console has a forward opening door and a step down so you've got plenty of room to put a head down in here. You've got two batteries. We have a start battery and a house battery. Everything is already wired and what we do with our wiring too, it's all labeled. If you've ever looked inside your center console and wondered where all those wires went or what they did or what feature they went to, on our boat you don't have to worry about it. We include another bag in here. It's also insulated for smaller stuff, either maybe for drinks or maybe a GPS or a handheld VHF or your personal items. And we do have a battery switch. Now the battery switch controls on and off, but also it has a parallel feature. Both batteries get separate feeds from the outboard. When your motor's running, it's charging both batteries at the same time. But in the event one battery gets a little bit low, you can throw the switch and parallel them. Now you can start your motor from your house battery or vice versa. Notice the amount of freeboard we have in this boat. We've got the draft of a bay boat but we're a lot lower inside the boat, a lot more secure when you're out in rough water because most bay boats they don't have a whole lot of freeboard. Behind the console we have hydraulic steering. It's tilt so you can stand, it's really comfortable or if you want to sit you can bring the wheel down. Our standard seats are these pedestal chairs. We can also do leaners or a fiberglass leaner with a live well. What's nice about the pedestals is that they're adjustable. You can slide up and back or if you want to spin around you can spin them around too where you can face aft. Let's say you're down in the keys, you're anchored up, you've got a chum slick going. It's really comfortable to be able to turn around and fish backwards. If you look at the face of our console, you've got plenty of room for flush mounted electronics. Even a big 12 inch screen will fit. The console fits the boat. It doesn't overpower it. And if you look at the amount of room you've got to walk past compared to other boats, it's a lot more than what you normally see in a boat this size. 
On both port and starboard sides, we've got two long boxes built into the floor. Like I said earlier, they are insulated, so if you want to use them as a fish box, let's say you catch a big kingfish, a big dolphin, you've got a place to put it. But more importantly, you can store five rods on each side and you can lock them. We've got real long rod tubes. It's enough to accept a nine and a half foot fly rod. Also, if you don't put rod and reels in there, there's enough room for scuba tanks, dive gear, any other gear that you want to carry on the boat. As we move aft, we've got a couch section. Built into the stern couch, we've got a pair of live wells, one on the port and starboard side. About 18 gallons a piece. They're plumbed, water goes overboard. It's not a standpipe either. What we do is we drain out the side of the live well, so there's nothing in the way of putting a dip net in there. In the center area, here's your third insulated bag. And this is great for drinks. What you do is you load your drinks at home, bring them out to the boat, you put them in, you have your drinks for the day. The ice will stay in the bag all day long. At the end of the day, instead of getting on your hands and knees and having to dig out all the cans, simply pick the bag up, bring it back in the house, and you're done. There's cushions across the back. That way it's additional seating. Comfortably, three to four people can sit here. We even have an optional backrest if you want to where everybody is here in the cockpit of the boat as far as seating. There's nobody forward. We did that on purpose. Number one, bow seating, it's okay as long as the boat's at displacement speed. You certainly don't want to be sitting up on the bow of any boat as you're busting the inlet or if the water is rough. It's just not a safe place to be. Also, when everyone's back here, you can hold a conversation. You're not detached from your passengers that are in the boat with you. Everyone's here, you can even spin these seats around, and now you've got a nice little conversation pit. You can get everyone back here with a lot of weight. No water comes in these cockpit drains. They're high enough to where you're not gonna have to worry about water backing up and getting your feet wet. We have large areas on both sides of the boat for additional flush mounted rod holders. We can put up to six rod holders if you want to set the boat up for trolling for mahi or something like that. One of the most important features of this boat is our closed transom with our Armstrong swim bracket. And this is on purpose. We've got the draft of a bay boat, but we've got the offshore ability of a deep V-center console, and it's mainly because of our transom. If this motor was mounted against a transom, it would have a cutout. Water could easily come over, especially in a following sea, but then that motor would encroach, and I need a great big well here for the motor. It just would take up so much room in the, inside the cockpit. Our overall length is 22 feet. We've got an eight and a half foot beam. Gives us a cockpit larger than most 24 foot boats, but we've done it in an overall length of 22 feet. We get additional flotation from this Armstrong bracket. Also makes a great swim platform. With the motor trimmed in the full upright position also, it's completely out of the water. Okay, that's the features of the Eastwood Coastal 2200. Every boat is custom built. They're sold factory direct. This is just one layout configuration. We also have dual console, a single side console, but every single boat is built to the owner's specifications. For more information, check out our website, eastwardboats.com.